The title of one I want to share this time is Does God does 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 God have a desire for something? Does God have a desire for something? <clears throat> reason why I'm sharing this, one reason, is because a lot of times when I mention that God has a desire or God has a need or things, I hear from people and they say, well, God is, you know, God and he doesn't need anything and he doesn't have any desires for anything. Um, but I was reading some time back <clears throat> a little snippet uh, that was talking about the Incarnation and um, and it was just a regular thing that someone would write about Jesus being made as a man. Uh, in fact, I'll read it to you. It says, Now this ray of divinity, talking about Jesus, Now this ray of divinity descended into the womb of a virgin, invested itself with flesh, and became man united with God. <clears throat> All I can tell you is that the Spirit of God, the, the real living Spirit of God, fell on me and began to take me through the scriptures uh, from Genesis all the way through to the New Testament and to show me the desire that God had from the beginning. Now we sort of know this, but I think this trip will be a little, little more interesting um, <clears throat> as to what it relates to because we're going to be talking about more than God among men, God just being and God coming uh, among men. We're going to be talking about the desire of the God, of our God uh, all the way through the scriptures. And um, we're, what we're going to see is God's desire to be united with man, um, not just come save man or that sort of thing. So <clears throat> one of the things that we see from the very beginning is God made two realms. And this is where the Spirit of God began to take me. It, not in, not like a history lesson, but take me into the heart of things and show me that God was formed two realms. He formed heaven and he formed earth. Um, so in Genesis uh, chapter one, beginning with verse one, and we'll lead, we'll read down through verse eleven. But this is this is important. This is important because this is. The path that the Holy Spirit wants us to take to, to really know the heart of God in relationship to this, this thing that he wants to develop. Right off the bat, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth, so this is all, this is all talking about heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So, so <clears throat> he created the heaven and the earth and doesn't say there's any problem with the heavens. It appears perfect. It appears to be a place where God would never have a need or a desire for anything because he made it perfect for him, which it, it doesn't, he doesn't have a need, therefore, or anything to desire. It's perfect. Um, and the Spirit of God, this is the guy who was telling me this story, back then, so he knows because he was doing this moving. He moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. <clears throat> and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And here's the point. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. Okay, Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Two realms. Two realities, as it were. And the gathering together of the waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth. <clears throat> he didn't say, let the heavens bring forth. He said, let the earth bring forth. The God of the heavens has all of his focus and his attention on the earth. 
and God made those two realms and God divided them. God divided them. Okay, so there's this division. There's a division. And this division was not because of sin. <clears throat> um, I wrote down, so he, he did so that he could show himself. And this is talking about later on as we get into it. He did so so that when the time came, he could show himself in leaving the greater realm so he could be joined with what he holds more, more dear, which is not earth but being united with man. And I wrote, greater, um, uh, greater than living in heaven is to be united with man, and greater than the, the vials, vileness of living in the earth and the evils of earth life, he made an earth <clears throat> so that he could be united with man. All right, so Genesis 2 uh, continues this sort of theme, and this will be verse 1 and 2 and then verse 4. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. These are the, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the earth and the heavens. <clears throat> so, starting at the beginning with man, shortly after the creation, man uh, came man. And in the Garden of Eden, before there was sin, before there was a need to remedy sin, we're going to see something here in Genesis 3, verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord <clears throat> who was with them amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where? Where art thou? He is here, but where is he with the Lord? In what relationship is he? So this is God. This is the God of the heavens who could have stayed in his realm and just endeavor to bring man up. But he comes down. And in, in Eden, he came down. And he made man. He came down not because of sin and not because of death. <clears throat> that wasn't his reason to do it. And there's, uh, there's no mention of Adam and Eve falling into sin and God striving to get man up to the other realm, there is every effort to him to come down and walk in another realm that isn't so perfect just to be united with man. <clears throat> so I wrote down, it seems to be in his heart to come down, but it's not just in his heart to come down. It's not just in his heart for earth above heaven. It is in his heart higher than the heavens and the earth to be united with man. <clears throat> so we see the same thing in the wilderness. And be sure and keep me posted on the time because uh, uh, in the wilderness, <clears throat> God came down again. Okay, so this is Exodus 25, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of uh, of every man that giveth it willing with his heart, ye shall take my offering. This is the uh, same chapter, verse 8 through 10. And let them make me a sanctuary. Let them, he, he said, make me an offering first in verse 1 and 2. But now he says, I don't just want an offering. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Okay. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half and the height thereof. <clears throat> now verse, same chapter, Exodus 25, 21 through 22. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, 
I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are upon the ark of testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So, <clears throat> remember, two realms, two realms, and yet he's choosing the earth. But he, you must understand, he's not choosing the earth. He's, he's choosing to come down from that realm, but he's choosing to be united with man in a, in a specific way. I mean, this is God, but he wants man. He wants to be with man. And, and it's going to develop as we keep going here. So I'll just read this real quick because we are. I may have to come back and do a second one on this. But <clears throat> God came down out of heaven just to be with mankind. He could have led them and warmed them from above, meaning the fire by night and the cloud by day. But he came down to be with them. He could have done miracles from above. Doing it all from above would seem to be his, uh, uh, in his best interest because that's the perfect place. It's perfect. He has no need of anything. Doing it all from above would seem to be in his best interest, but there was something he desired that was above his comfort. He doesn't just visit. He dwells with them. He, for reasons of his heart, he chooses to be an earth dweller. All right, so let's go to the New Testament now and let's talk about the Incarnation. Matthew 1, uh, 20 through 25. <clears throat> but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, for she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of, uh, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth the firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. All right. So it, it, it doesn't have to be Christ with us. I mean, not in the truest sense, especially in the manner that we see where he's being birthed in, in a human. He, he's exchanging the realm of heaven, not just for earth, but the womb of a woman, in an effort to be joined with us. So <clears throat> Paul so Paul comes along and he starts talking about Christ in you. And in Colossians 1, verse 25 through 29, he says this, Whereof I am made a minister. This is the thing I'm made a minister. It's according to the dispensation, this thing, this timing of God thing, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. I got goosebumps right now because the fulfilling of the word of God is that God from the very beginning wanted to leave his realm and be with us and even you know walked among us in the garden and brought down uh, uh, in, in the tabernacle and uh, so all of this is a mystery even the mystery which hath been hidden from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the riches of the mystery is united, not God among us, but Christ in us, and it's Christ. It's, it's the God of heaven not wanting to be in heaven. <laughs> it's the God of heaven wanting to be in us. Lord, help us. The hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we should present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to this working, which is working in me mightily. God has a desire. All right, we might, who knows? I don't know. We're probably out of time. Okay. Again, this is more than God just coming among men. This shows God, shows the degree of, uh, that God wants to bring about the fulfillment of his desire to be united with mankind in oneness and 
to leave that realm and to literally be here with us. That's his choice. All right, so Ephesians 5, uh, verse 24 through 32. <clears throat> Uh, and maybe I'll just read the first part here. Therefore, for as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now we're talking about love for love he did this and gave himself for it. Uh, drop down to verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He doesn't see him. He doesn't see us as separate from himself. He made sure that wasn't the case, not because we needed it, not because we were in sin or frail, but because he wanted to be united with us. And then finally, they, uh, and the whole thing is good, but I'm trying to skip it so I can finish this today. This, the verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. It's a great mystery. The mystery is the mystery of God's heart from the beginning, making two realms and making one perfect and one without form and void and darkness. And he's willing to go down there because there's something more important to him than perfection and beauty and not having any needs. And for whatever reason it is that's in his heart, it's to be united with us. Okay, Revelation 21, verse 9 and 10. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven full uh, vials full of the seven plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So in the early book of Revelation, it was to come up, come up here. A, a door was open in heaven, come up here. But in the end, that which is joined to him leaves above and comes, comes down. The bride is the deepest uniting with God to bring forth his son. All right, and then finally, just two more scriptures in Revelation 22 or, or three more. And he showed me a pure river of water, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve men of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. He, the Lamb, is in the midst of her. In Revelation 22, 17, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the waters of life freely. Come to what? Come to the reality that God is not merely looking to make us Christian, but desires to be joined with us. Because of that desire, only because of that desire, he prefers earth more than heaven. Father, help us to comprehend your heart. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Who would open the heart of the word to melt us and to bring us to a realization that all that you've always wanted wasn't even heaven and earth. It was us. And you showed it from the beginning by making a perfect place and saying, that's not so important to me as being joined to you. And being in the vile earth is not so bad to me as being with you. Father, help us. Help us to see the heart of this and that you do have a desire the prophets spoke of, and it's been fulfilled, and as Colossians says, and it's the fulfilling of the word and the dispensation of God to this time, this mystery. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Sorry, love you, people. Love you. Love your hearts. Love that you love Jesus. I love that you pursue him. I love that, you, that we get this time together. God bless you. Thanks.